What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. Now we took a two day hiatus from this series, but we're back with some more super realistic rebuilds as today we have the Houston Rockets in a super realistic rebuild. Obviously, you guys have been loving this series. I've been loving doing it. So I got to go ahead and quickly ask if you guys can go ahead and smash that like button. It only takes two seconds of your time. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps out a lot. And uh, only two seconds of time, like I said. So greatly appreciate it on that. But other than that, we got to talk about this Houston Rockets team because this team is fun. But it's, you know, obviously they're in a rebuild and it's going to be a good team one day. But I'm excited regardless about them. So, of course, they walked away with the second pick in the draft and grabbed Jalen Green. And they have Christian Wood, John Walls not going to be playing uh, for this Houston Rockets team at all. So I got to make sure he's out for the whole season. That way he's not inserted into this rotation in any way because they're trying to work out, on a, you know, in a way to trade him, buy him out or whatever they decide to do. I'm not sure if that will be solved this season or not. I can see a world where it's uh, pushed until the off season, which honestly would suck for John Wall because it's not like he's getting any younger. So hopefully they're able to come to a conclusion on that. Um, that way John Wall can go play for someone else this season. Maybe we'll see how that goes. I saw he was uh, working out in the gym and staying in shape and stuff so that's good and of course they have kevin porter jr jalen green kind of their backcourt of the future hopefully uh jay sean tate there's a lot of good young players here so i mean the houston rocks have done a relatively decent job uh off, obviously after trading james harden now the only thing i think most of us did not love including myself is when they grabbed victor oladipo in that trade instead of grabbing karis vert i don't know what the point of grabbing oladipo was but regardless um that's what they did so there's nothing you can do about it now he's got to look for it but getting jalen green definitely is going to help you in the future uh uh, has shown shine at times he scored 30 points and i think he broke the three points made rookie record or something like that in a single game i'm not too sure but like i said john wall we got to make sure he's not playing at all this season and then other than that this is what the rotation is going to look like if we can go ahead and fix it as we have kevin porter jr jillian green jay sean tate Daniel tyus christian wood eric gordon uh opera shagoon kenny martin jr and david nawamba so garrison matthews and then osman gruba so we're going to go ahead and some of this first season without doing anything of course like i said we got to keep uh john wall out of the rotation this whole season season and then we'll go um, uh, obviously come to a conclusion on that in the off season additionally today's video is sponsored by prize picks which is a dfs player props app that's matching up to a hundred dollar deposit when you use my code crushables let me show you Price Picks is a DFS app where you're literally facing no one other than the numbers. You're just facing the projections. Let me show you some of my past entries. So on this one, I decided to do a power play where I decided to bet the over on Rudy Gobert and Harrison Barnes. The power play was able to three times my money and Rudy Gobert and Harrison Barnes were both able to hit, which mounted me to $150. On this one, I did a flex play with LaMelo, Fred VanVleet, Joe Harris, and Gordon Hayward. Unfortunately, Joe Harris was only... Like three points off. If he literally hit one of his threes, I would walk away with $100. So unfortunate, but that's just what happens. But I didn't walk away with nothing as I was still able to win $32 after only betting 21. So I didn't walk away with nothing. So you can decide whether or not you want to do flex plays or power plays. Feel free to use my link in the description. Of course, you can always ask me on Twitter if you have any questions and use my code crushables when you sign up. So season number one comes to an end and obviously we're bad. I mean, that's kind of no surprise there. We knew we would be a bad team going into things. We're in a rebuild. So we shouldn't be too shocked about that. So I'm not too upset with that, obviously. Uh, as far as all rookie teams, I'm excited to see if Jalen Green, yes, he did. He made an all rookie first team as, uh, let's see what he averaged this season. I guess we'll check in a second. I'm not going to scroll through that too much. All rookie second team. Uh, did we get another? Yeah, Alperin Chagoon also made it. So that's a nice uh, little addition to the all rookie teams as well. But obviously, we're not in the playoffs with a 14 seed and we're going to be uh, going in the lottery. So looking at the player stats, we had 22 uh, from John Wall. I'm not sure why he was even playing. I put personal reasons out for the season. And so that's uh, relatively annoying, but whatever. So I guess he got inserted in the rotation somehow, but whatever. Let's go look at the player stats past him, I guess. Um, we have John Wall, 22, Eric Gordon, 20, 19 from Christian Wood, 18 from Jalen Green, and 16 from Kevin Porter Jr. So obviously, Eric Gordon's another guy I would like to find a way to get rid of. He averaged 20 points per game, so I'm sure we probably should have. Uh, I didn't even think about Eric Gordon, to be honest. I probably should have tried to trade him at the trade deadline, averaging 20 points per game. But he'll still be very valuable in the offseason to somebody because, I mean, 41% from three, averaging 20. Uh, uh, off the bench or even as a starter for some team someone will be interested so hopefully we can find a partner in that but let's go ahead and simulate these playoffs and let's go ahead and get in this offseason where we have a lot of work to do so of course it's going to start with a draft lottery so hopefully this season we get really lucky in the lottery like we kind of did last year as we projected the fifth pick in the draft so watching this is something i kind of want to do but since our pick is so later i'm just going to go ahead and skip and hope for the result of getting into the top three as we jump down to number six that's fine we can still get somebody good but 
going to that top three would have been nice as Detroit has back-to-back -back number one picks lucky them so damn that's definitely something we could have used but we dropped Thunder get number five Suns get four I don't know why the Suns are this bad but that's kind of crazy uh, but we have the sixth pick in the draft so we can work with that uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep our head coach the same uh, we're gonna keep all this kind of the same the only thing obviously we kind of fill this out usually so I'm just gonna go ahead and make these quick little signings here I usually just grab whoever because I mean as long as they have badges I guess I just kind of grab them because there's no ratings anymore really I mean I see the stars obviously but uh, we're gonna sign all those guys and then uh, we just need like one post D coach and then we're good so we have that boom just like that we have our head coaching staff and we still have four million to spend so should be able to resign our head coach once he becomes a free agent head coach I guess you can say so on the draft night here we go uh, we cannot trade John Wall just yet uh, because he's got a player option to accept but as we know in real life players accept player options all the time but one thing we can do is we can trade Eric Gordon so I got to find the perfect team in order to trade Eric Gordon coming off a season where he averaged 20 points 19 million dollars is all he has so um it'd probably be like a bad contract and a pick or something that we take in return for Eric Gordon or something I don't know we'll see what kind of trade package I can find because um I just kind of want to get rid of him just because I kind of just roll with the young guys and let him go play for a contending team because we're not so this trade pops up in the trade finder and I'm looking at this. I know Cameron Thomas one day is going to be a beast. So I kind of like the idea of grabbing him. He didn't really play this season for the Nets and they're also offering me a second round pick and we get off Eric Gordon's contract and they get themselves a stud six man. I like this a lot. They'll have Patty Mills and Eric Gordon come off the bench, obviously backing up James Harden and uh, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving or whatever. So yeah, I mean, this trade makes a ton of sense for me. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Get rid of Eric Gordon and we need a young player, Cameron Thomas. Ideally though, after averaging 21 points, I would like to get a first round pick but it looks like they can't trade either so can i squeeze two seconds out of you yes we can so just like that we grab two seconds for eric gordon ideally would have wanted a first round pick but i do love the addition of cameron thomas who i think is going to be really good in this league and did not play for the nets at all and he's going to get an opportunity to play here more so awesome awesome i love that first trade that we did daniel tyus uh, on a big contract not going to trade him yet uh, but we also have these six pick in the draft and again we still have the john wall saga to take care of so let's go ahead and see what we can grab at number six we kind of have our backcourt of the future christian wood is a center for now that we like but i'm not sure what i like about his long term uh here as chet holmgren slips to us number six obviously we do not pass up on this we take chet holmgren here um where is he did he go or did it was i oh he did never mind he went number three i guess i was tripping okay well i still do see paulo bonchero on the board i see Jaden hardy we see jalen duran so i mean there's definitely a big man that we can take here and feel good about because we don't really need a backup uh or we don't really need guards we don't need that so paulo here i think is going to be the pick here so just like that we walk away with a center christian wood becomes more expendable now obviously he's kind of not on the same timeline as kevin porter jr and uh we also have a uh, hunter salas here so we're gonna go ahead and select him as well and we have a uh, second round pick from the brooklyn Nets. so let's go Go ahead and see if we can grab here as we have um let's see let's grab yeah, we can grab Terrence Shannon Jr. So just like that, we come out of the draft with a couple of, uh, or a few awesome picks, I would say. Paulo, Hunter Salas, and Terrence Shannon. Welcome to the team. There's plenty of guard depth that we can compete, that can compete. DJ Augustine, we're actually going to decline. And of course, John Wall's contract is now a thing we need to address this offseason. So John Wall, of course, is going to go to some type of team. I'm not really sure who would want him, but we got to find a way to get rid of him just because he just doesn't need to be here so john wall for some reason started playing for us 47 million dollars though is going to be tough to get rid of that is a lot of money uh, so i imagine um, in real life this is going to end up in a buyout which i might have to do that same thing because obviously the warriors are not going to give me clay thompson for john wall that doesn't make any sense the wizards are interesting they could give me davis bertans then you have dia but why would they reunite bradley Beal and john wall when they trade john wall so i just can't see that happening especially for 47 million dollars so yeah nothing really that great's popping up the nets i mean i guess if they didn't think Kyrie Irving was coming back maybe but yeah none of these make sense in my opinion so uh we're just gonna have to basically either trade him to uh, the only team i can think of that makes sense is either the celtics or the clippers and uh the clippers I mean, they would have to give me, uh, let's see. They have Luke Kennard. I don't, I don't know if they'd be interested in this. So John Wall, Luke Kennard, they still have to like have 30 million matchup and they're not going to do this. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's just not going to work. And then we could do this. We could do that, but I don't think that's going to happen. So for us, I think it's just going to have to end in a buyout. So basically how this is going to work is we are going to, John Wall is going to have to probably give some of his money. Oh, it's on a one year deal. I don't know. I'm not sure how it would work out, but someone would have to give a little bit of money or someone would have to give in. John Wall would either have to give up some money or the Rockets just have to pay it. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of money from him, I would say, and then buying him out. That's what I'm going to do. So just like that, John Wall 
it's time for you to go and you can go be a free agent and sign somewhere else so john wall is officially gone into free agency obviously uh we just kind of bought him out i took like 13 million dollars from him nothing too crazy i mean that is still a lot of money but still so looking at it now now that john wall is completely gone this is what we're rolling forward with what we have kevin porter jr hunter salas we have jalen green terrence shannon cameron thomas there's a lot of shooting guards that compete for like that backup shooting guard spot and i'm i'm here for it just sean tate david nawamba we have Kenyon martin jr daniel tyus uh garuba and of course we kind of have uh, Christian Wood, Paulo Banchero, and Alper and Chagoon. So, I mean, I think Christian Wood on his $14 million salary is probably going to be like a trade deadline trade. I don't want to trade him right now just because I kind of want to keep him for now. But with the two centers that we have that are both 19 and he's 26 years old on a one-year deal, I think I am going to be trading Christian Wood at the trade deadline. So, I mean, really the only thing uh, left that I want to do this offseason, I guess, just get some depth. I mean, we kind of have, though. I, can't, I feel like we kind of have the depth that I like. Um, we could go out there and free agency and sign someone, but I don't think that's necessary i mean our overall suck don't get me wrong but at least i'll be letting the young guys play right so i'm gonna go ahead and do that i'm gonna roll forward with what we got i'm not gonna sign anyone we got plenty of uh uh, players that fill out the rotation so there's no reason christian wood going down overall sucks but kim Mor or kevin porter jr going up three jay shante and then of course like i said there's a lot of guys down here they're only like 73 overalls but i'm content with just letting the young guys play we're obviously gonna suck again but maybe this team surprised me somehow but i'm cool with letting the young guys just play it out see how this team competes and see how we do on a day in and day out basis so let's go ahead see what this rotation looks like uh again power ranking lens number 29 we're a bad team it is what it is so let's go ahead and just run actually 10 man rotation is probably fine with the uh, young team that we have we want to see a lot of people play so uh kevin or kevin porter jr jalen green of course jay shante daniel ties paula Monchero. uh actually I'm going to start Christian Wood, I think, uh, just because I want Christian Wood to become like a trade asset. So I'm going to give him 37 minutes. Paulo will eventually will take over, and then Alper Shugun will back him up. And then Garuba, David Nwamba, and Cameron Thomas is also getting minutes. So W. And then uh, Kenny Mara Jr., I guess, got injured in the summer league. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Well, that is what it is. So let's go ahead and simulate this season again. I think we'll probably stop the trade deadline and trade Christian Wood. That way, we get something for him rather than letting him walk in the offseason. So to be honest with you, through the first you know half season through the trade deadline, we are competing. Uh, ninth seed out uh, west. I feel like I've been saying east this whole video. Hopefully I'm not saying. I feel like I've been saying the east. Have I been saying that? And then maybe not. I don't know. But Kevin Porter Jr. averaged 20. Kevin Jalen Green with 20, and Christian Wood is averaging 16 points per game. So it is time to go ahead and trade Christian Wood away and see what we can get for him. So Christian Wood, uh, it was nice having you here, but I feel like we can roll forward with what we have, and uh, we're gonna just see what we can grab. So Christian Wood, let's go ahead and throw you out there and let's see what's out there. And if we can't find anything, we'll kind of make our own trade. So Alex Caruso, Elise Johnson doesn't really entice me that much. Robert Williams, Marcus Smart. I don't really need a center though. Paul, I can get Paul George. What the, uh, like how? Okay. It's because I don't have anyone in a contract. But say like, how can I even take Paul George's contract? But I guess we're not really paying anyone right now. Uh, Dylan Brooks, D'Anthony Melton. We got Clint Capella. Bring him back to Houston. Miles Bridges. I mean, obviously I would love to do this. Like this would be a great addition, but let's be honest. I don't think the Hornets would do this. Miles Bridges is playing phenomenal for them. Don't see why they would do that trade. Buddy Heald in a first round pick. So, I mean, I guess we could walk away with the first round pick. Buddy Heald playing small forward. Uh, he's got... $40 million left on his contract, though. So we could walk away with the first, I guess. Jonathan Isaac in a second. Ooh, I kind of like the Jonathan, Jonathan Isaac addition. So, but at the same time, the Magic kind of have Mo Bamba and Wendell Carter Jr. So I'm not sure why they would do that. But Jonathan Isaac would be cool to have at that power forward spot. Would not mind that at all. Mark Williams, Eric Gordon, Aaron Gordon, Monte Morris, and then Malcolm Brogdon, Devontae Graham, and a first. TJ Warren, OG on Anobi. Again, I don't know why the Raptors would do something like that. DeAndre Russell, Norton Powell, Nasir Little, and then Andrew Wiggins and Kyle Kuzma and Davis Breton. So, um, for me, my, my favorite trade was obviously the Jonathan Isaac one. I mean, I love the idea of Gavin Jonathan Isaac here. Uh, but at the same time, I don't really see the Magic wanting Christian Wood. I don't see how that helps them. So we probably won't do that. I think we're going to go ahead and try to make our own trade to just feel a little bit more real about this thing. So let me see what I can come up with. Let's go ahead and, you know, find a team that's center needy and see what we can find. So we went ahead and traded Christian Wood to the Washington Wizards, which just makes the Wizards a little bit better for them. And we got uh, Dave Bertans, a first round pick and a second round pick. So ideally would have wanted a little bit more, but Christian Wood on a one-year deal. I mean, uh, 
you know, obviously Daniel Tice won't be a big, not Daniel Tice, Davis Bertans won't be a huge part of this rotation, but at the same time, this gives Paulo Bunchero the new starting center spot. Daniel Tice is still our starting power forward, which isn't ideal. Uh, Jay Shante, Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr. I'm cool with, obviously, kind of gave our center the spot now, and then um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good for the rest of the season. Obviously, we still can go out there and compete and still make the playoffs somehow or get the play in, but for now, I'm content if we don't make it and I'm ready to just enter the lottery again and kind of see what happens and hopefully we can get like a new stud starting power forward or something because we need some more we need uh some more starters so we somehow made the play-in game i mean it looks like our young rookie backcourt not rookie backcourt but young backcourt i would say christian wood went six man of the washington wizards i uh, was able to prevail us as most approved player goes to jalen green 26 points per game 40 percent from three basically the perfect james harden replacement if he's able to come in and do this it's basically going to replace james harden production and he's younger and he's cheaper right now of four of course we're eventually gonna have to pay him but luka Doncic is hurt right now that sucks for the mavericks hopefully he's back soon for them but we are in like i said we are in the plan so we can go ahead why am i looking on that side of the bracket uh let's look at this one ninth seed uh against the los angeles clippers so 26 points from jalen green kevin porter jr from 19 or for 19 and then 13 from paulo and then jay sean tate with 10 and then alpern shugu with nine so basically i mean this offseason i think we're going to address kind of a dental ties look like uh he's out two to four weeks that sucks so it looks like davis bertans might be our starter right now uh no it's Kenyon martin jr which i'm cool with as well so well, let's go ahead and i mean let's see if we can find our way into the playoffs so summoning through a game against the los angeles clippers and we win wow okay so we all we have to do now is beat minnesota and we're in the playoffs and we get a houston rockets for oklahoma city thunder first round playoff series that would be entertaining as hell as a watch i'm not gonna lie uh but i mean the Timberwolves are a really good team so i don't know can we beat them let's see game and hey we're in the playoffs, I guess. Okay, so we get to play the Oklahoma City Thunder. What a series this would be. So we got Shea, Josh Giddy, Zach Levine. Zach Levine always finds a way on the Thunder. It's so interesting. Well, um, are we going to be the AC team that upsets the Thunder here? Let's go ahead and see. I'm excited to kind of watch and see. Somebody go around, and uh, can we upset them? No, we lose in five. But hey, at least we got some playoff experience. That's all we can take away from this. And we can make this team even better in the offseason. That's the scary part. Oklahoma City and Portland as we got the Pelicans going on to beat the Brooklyn Nets in the finals in six games as Zion Williamson is your finals MVP. So good for Pelicans. So now it is time for the draft lottery where we unfortunately won't have a lottery pick. Very unfortunate. Look at the Thunder though, man. Oh my goodness. Number one, number three, number five, number nine, and number 10. That is insane. Do they like, so they have number four, number three, uh, number 10, number 11. So they have three lottery picks. Good for them. Wow. And we have um, the 22nd pick via the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, and then what else we got? That might be from the PJ Tucker trade, I think. Um, and then I think that's it, it looks like. So we only have, uh, or we might have had a different, uh, another one. I just didn't really see it. Let's see. Let's see. Um, no, 15 and 22. So I guess I didn't see 15 for some reason. Okay. Staff signing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually grab our uh, head coach back. If I can go ahead and click on the right damn thing. Damn. Okay. So let's get our head coach back. We have Trevor Stanley out here. Uh, but I just want Steven back for the most part. I mean, I feel like we were developing something, so I don't really want to see him walk for nothing. So we'll go ahead and grab him. And then I guess we also need a shot doctor. So let's go ahead and see what kind of shot doctors we have out here because we're going to need one. So head scout, guard guru. This might take me forever. Let me find. Oh, there we go. Shot doctor. Um, I see you. And boom, just like that, we'll walk away with those two. I'm not going to worry about the guard guru. We'll just go ahead and move on. So let's go to the draft. All right, 15 and 22. I mean... We have Davis Bertans salary in 15 and 22. Could we get like something interesting here on draft night? None. Dave Melton, Buddy Heald. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and draft at number 15 and number 22. Add some more young talent to this roster. Um, I'm going to definitely be looking for some, uh, yeah, small forward, power forward type players here. So let's see. We got Scotty Henderson or Scooty Henderson, I should say. And then Nicola DeJerserik. I don't know how to say this guy's name, but I'm going to take him because he's the best available. And then uh, he's also from Serbia. Awesome. And then... What else we got? So uh, power forward wise, we have, we're going to go ahead and take him because we need some more power forward depth anyway. So boom, just like that, we walk out of the draft with our two position needs, 75, 73. Probably won't be like getting crazy minutes this first season, but uh, happy to have them regardless. So welcome to the team, all you guys. Obviously not going to uh, let any of you walk. And then I definitely want Kevin Porter Jr. back, Jason Tate, wouldn't mind him back. And then for free agency, it is time to kind of find out what we can do. So Kevin Porter Jr., uh, we should be able to walk away with someone this offseason as well if someone is available. Uh, because we can make this team better like we just 
made it to the playoffs. Let's go ahead and uh, you know go for it. So uh, we need a better starting small forward and a better, a better starting power forward, though. That is our problem. So love our center, love our backcourt, but the forward spots need some work. So uh, let's see. We have Mikel Alexander-Walker. We have Chris Middleton, which I'm not going to shoot for the stars and go for him, obviously. Uh, Kelton Johnson's a free agent, restricted free agent, which would be fun to have. Um, let's see what he's averaging. 15 points per game. We could throw some money at him, but not sure if that's the guy I want. DeAndre Hunter, Cameron Reddish are all, also out here. So those guys would be fun. Porzingis, Harrison Barnes. I mean, we could technically throw some money at one of these small forwards. I do like any of these guys right here. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, Cameron Reddish. I think Cameron Reddish is the more expendable of those two. Honestly, Cameron Reddish, 23 years old. I'm going to go ahead and throw him some money. I don't know if Atlanta would match this, but four years, 20 million. I'm paying the man. I'm doing it. Why not? Cameron Reddish. We're going to pay him off potential, I guess, and hope he comes in and becomes a really good small forward for us. So, Reddish, we're signing, and Atlanta's not going to match. That's let, Let's go. So, obviously, we're a rebuilding team, so we kind of overpaid, but I'm cool with that. I will wait for Kevin Porter Jr. to come back, and then, boom, just like that, we walk away with Kevin Reddish upgrading our small forward spot. Very much needed to upgrade that, obviously. So, Kevin Porter Jr., I'm going to go ahead and sign as well. And then, power forward spot still needs some work, but I think we can maybe work on that via the trade finder. So, uh, we have our backup point guard, Hunter. We have uh, Cameron Thomas, Josh Christopher, and we have uh, the guy we just drafted and Cameron Reddish. And of course, our power forward spot. There's a lot of guys here, but I'm 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 ready to make some kind of trade. Dale Tice, nine million dollars, should be able to get us something. And then still have Davis Breton, seventeen million dollars, both expirings. Let's go ahead and get something. I kind of mentioned my interest in Jonathan Isaac earlier, but him as a starting power forward, I think just makes a lot of sense on this team. I mean, his fit in Orlando has been weird. He's been hurt a lot for them, so I'm not really sure uh, how he fits there, but I'm just going to go ahead and try to get him from Orlando as we're going to offer that. They say they are contenders, so looks like we're going to have to obviously offer a little bit more in order for this to happen. So I don't want to trade Josh Christopher. I don't want to trade. Okay. What if I threw Daniel? Yeah, that's not going to do it. So um, I don't really want to give up more than one first round pick though, to be honest with you. Do I give up Osman Garuba or do I give up? Let's say, uh, what about Kenyon Martin Jr.? Okay, that got it done. So just like that, we walk away with Jonathan Isaac as our new starting power forward. And then Usman Garuba will be our new backup, obviously. And then boom, just like that, we kind of have a full rotation I'm really content with. And I think we have a nice young squad now. We were able to put together a really nice young team that I think is going to, you know, do some damage. Jalen Green, 88, 84, 82, 82, 81. I feel really content with this team. I really do. Cameron Thomas, Dino Tyus. I'm really excited about this team now. I mean, we just made it to the playoffs last year. I feel like we can definitely do this again in this time after actually not being the plan i really do feel confident in this team going forward now so let's go ahead load this draft class and let's look at our rotation because i really do feel comfortable with this rotation so power ranking lens is number 18 obviously still a young squad that might take some time for us to be like a championship contender but i like our starting five a lot i'm gonna go ahead and run this diamond rotation as well so we'll have kevin pointer jr jalen green cameron reddish jonathan isaac paulo shingun off the bench garuba uh obviously a small four we drafted and cameron thomas we got out of the brooklyn nets trade so uh, as far as our proficiencies concerned we're at three and a half and uh looks like we're just gonna stay at three and a half so boom i love what we have uh, as far as our shot tendencies are concerned um camera i just paid a lot of money to so what is the shot tendency it is a 80 or no that's a okay uh, Kevin Porter Jr. I'm going to go ahead and boost it up to like a 78 because I do want to see Kevin Reddish take some shots because I just paid him. So just like that, we're going to go ahead similar to the end of season number three. I feel really excited and I feel like this team's going to do some damage. I feel like we should be a playoff team, but we'll see what happens. But like I predicted, this team ended up making the playoffs as a fourth seed out West. So I feel pretty good about how we put together this team. Trey Young is your MVP. Victor is your rookie of the year on the Golden State Warriors. Also your sixth man, Giannis defensive player. Chet Holmgren most improved and Nick McMillan coach of the year as Brandon Harrison is your executive all right here we go on be a first team i imagine we don't have anybody from the rockets making it james harden is hurt nicole Jokic is hurt that's not good for the playoffs um and then Julius randall evan mobley are also hurt so there are a lot of injuries i don't really know what our injuries look like because sometimes i turn it off dude because or not i don't turn off the injuries i turn it off like showing me every freaking injury that i have because sometimes there's an injury every day there's some dumb injuries that shown and then all if it's a first team for jonathan isaac we love to see that so we brought in jonathan isaac to be kind of that defender as well so i love the addition of him and uh we're the four seed out west so we're going up against the dallas mavericks the battle of texas okay let's go ahead and look at the player stats we had 28 from jillian green that is not good kevin porter jr and cameron Reddish are both out in this series that is not ideal at all uh thankfully have like cameron thomas who can step up jonathan i i mean what does our rotation look like right now so that is not a very good speed bump in these uh postseason so jillian green sataransky is starting at point guard for us that is eh. that is not good at all man and uh I'd almost rather have Cameron Thomas out there. That doesn't, I mean, 
Yeah, that's what I would almost rather have. Can we mess with that? Because Sadoransky is just not it. So, um, Cam Thomas, he goes down at point guard. Uh, does Jalen Green go up at point guard? No, he goes up at small forward, though. I'm going to move him to point guard just for this series. Just because, I mean, I ain't trying to have Sadoransky in the rotation. Get out of here, please. Because that is not going to give us the best chance to win this. So, uh, and then these two guys being out is just not ideal at all, man. But, hey, it is a speed bump. We're playing Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. I mean, when you have your, two of your best players out, it looks like they signed. Chris Porzingis back and Moses Brown. I mean, it's possible we could beat this team, but with those two players being out, it, it definitely hinders things. So let's go ahead. Are they both? Uh, oh, it looks like. Oh, no, they're both out. So uh, Cam Porter Jr. is day to day, though. So we'll have to check on that. And then Cameron Reddish is four or six weeks. We won't have Cameron Reddish at all. So that's unfortunate. So game one. Uh, we're up one to zero though so that's a good start 28 points from amari bailey but 29 and 12 24 from cam thomas so came in 24 points that is exactly what we wanted um i'm happy with that john Green 21 boom okay game two uh they even it up okay did we get is kevin porter jr still hurt that's the question he is not that is huge so now i know you are obviously uh in the rotation but i'm sorry or you were starting cam thomas but um i'm sorry actually what we could do and uh, let's see doing eight points okay you know what we could do is we could have cameron thomas move to the small forward for this series uh that way we can have him out there just because i kind of like the idea of him being out there more than i like our uh, euro stash guy but they still want to start um whatever i guess we'll just roll with it well here we go game three let's see what happens uh they're up two to one so boom kobe white 28 points 22 okay game four uh we even it up okay two to two local dodge 34 kevin porter with 32 here we go game five we're up three to two okay w jalen green 42 points all right i love it 21 points off the bench can we win in six games Yes, we can. We're on to the second round as we beat the Dallas Mavericks even after all the injuries. Is Cameron Reddish back yet? He is not. He is still two to four weeks away. So that's unfortunate. But hey, I'm comfortable with what we got. And we are only playing an AC to San Antonio Spurs. So John T. Murray, Derek White, Devin Vassell, a young team in their own right as they upset the first seeded Grizzlies. So we definitely have to be a little intimidated. Uh, game one, though. We're up one to zero. Good start. 40 points from Jalen Green. Absolutely torching these post uh, playoffs. 27 points in the playoffs. That is what you'd love to see. Game two. We're up two to zero. Game three, three to zero, and are we gonna beat them in five, please? Yes, we are. We're in the Western Conference Finals, and we're gonna have home court advantage. That is something I was definitely not expecting. Is Cameron Reddish back? He is still not back. So even Cameron Reddish being gone this whole series, a whole playoffs, we're still in the Western Conference Finals, and we get to play Minnesota, which is actually a team we beat in the play-in last year. So. Take that for what you will. Maybe we can upset this team again. Here we go. Game one. Let's see. We're uh, we're down one to zero. Unfortunate start. Jalen Green, but we only lost by seven, so not too bad. Um, we're down two to zero though. Uh, we're down three to zero. And man, oh man, that was a crazy playoff run for us. But unfortunately, with our starting small forward out, it just and Jalen Green got hurt. That is probably what that's probably what killed us. Let's see. All right, DeAndre Russell, and then Jalen Green didn't play in game four. Uh, did he play in game one? Let's see. Uh, yeah, he played in game one okay game two he did not so we lost him in game two that is what killed us so unfortunate injuries plagued us this season but hey the minnesota Timberwolves going to win the championship and we made it all the way to the west Conference finals even without having a full healthy lineup so i feel good i don't really think i'm gonna do much i'm gonna let this young talent just develop let him progress and we might actually have a lottery pick this offseason which we do as we have it from it looks like the brooklyn nets obviously for, obviously from the james harden trade as it jumps up to our uh, jumps down i should say to number 13 so we had the 13th pick in the draft and like i said this team just went on a heroic run with all the injuries and we almost almost got it done almost won a championship even with all the injuries we were suffering so really unfortunate it would have been amazing had we walked away champions after all that we were dealing with so at number 13 we're gonna go ahead um i've never seen this before houston rifles ones they need to have Huh? I've never seen this before. Wow. Okay. So assistant GM, I guess we need to sign assistant to GM. Uh, I am the GM though. Why do I need an assistant? Okay. Let's see what we got. Um, there we go. I guess there's an assistant GM. I'll go ahead. We have no money though. What am I supposed to has polarity? Yeah. Let me keep negotiating. You want $0. Okay. I guess I can boost it up to 150. You got, you know what? You can deal with this. Always auto handle. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Let's go to 13 now. Number 13 pick in the draft. Let's do it and grab. Okay, I've never ever seen this before. So a little help, guys. Um, 
So literally all I could offer is 150k to these guys and none of them are interested at all And I can't go look at my coach game plan until I do this You need to fill your vac vac vacancies in order to use this feature Please go to the staff menu and fill out all your empty staff positions Like what am I supposed to do? I can't even pay anybody. I'm broke What do I do? I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. Am I even allowed to simulate the season or do I have to? Okay, I am. So I'm not really sure what this is all about. I can't even freaking like look at my rotation at all, I guess. I guess I'm locked out of the rotation this season because I can't pay anybody. Nobody wants to come work for me. 150K is not enough for anyone. I don't really know what to do. I like sign a scout? Like, Nobody's interested interest meter is boom like terrible. Like I can't do anything here Whatever, man. I guess I just won't be able to look at my rotation at all this season I don't really like do you want to come work in a front office staff role for no reason? Like I can't sign anyone so I guess we're just locked out of rotation this year It's not gonna matter. So, uh, yeah, but this is what our roster looks like. I guess 90 Jalen green 89 82 82 81 I mean, I feel good about a rotation, but I can't look at it. So Hopefully it's working out well. I'm not really sure, but let's go ahead. Tell me this season, I guess, without looking at rotation and see how things go. So this year we went 64 and 18. Despite me being locked on my rotation, this team still did a damn good job. Hopefully though, no injuries, right? No injuries at all. That's lucky. We're awesome to be healthy here. So as long as we stay healthy throughout these playoffs, I feel confident in a championship here. So let's go ahead and look at our player stats. This will probably be the last season regardless of what happens. Uh, 20 points from Jalen Green, 20 points from Kevin Porter Jr. And 16 from Cameron Reddish, 16 from Paulo. So here we go. So let me play in, see if we get to play. We get the AFC to Denver Nuggets. Have Jamal Murray, Benedict, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, Jokic. I mean, not going to lie, a really good team. They have Cole Anthony as well. Keontae George, Nashawn Highland. I mean, Jalen Brunson. What is it? Backup point guard rotation? Damn, like every player is like a guard. So shooting guard, shooting guard, point guard, and then they have a center there. Okay, well, hopefully we don't find a way to lose it. Somebody current round against Denver, and we are going to... Okay, I was a little nervous there, but we beat them in six. Okay, and uh, hopefully you walked out of the uh, that uh, series healthy and nobody's hurt. Let's see. No, that's not good. Cameron Reddish is only day-to-day, -day, though, and Jonathan Isaac is two to four weeks. So we are not healthy. That is unfortunate. But the good thing is we do have some depth as... I can't even look at this, man. That's so annoying, bro. Like, I can't even look at my damn rotation right now. What am I... Like, I have no money, bro. Uh, I can't even offer it. Whatever. Not going to know who's starting or whatever. So, let's see what happens. We're up 1-0. Okay. I believe uh, Cameron Thomas getting the starting small forward, but I don't know. So, okay. We beat them 9-6-1-13. Game two, they even it up. All right. 21-12. And, and then Cameron Reddish is back. Okay. So, that's good. Uh, game three, we're up 2-1. to one. Is Jalen Green hurt? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't just see him. 3-1, to one, and we beat them in five? Yes, we do. Okay. Despite the injuries, and uh, let's see. What, what do we look like right now? Do we, Are we hurt? Jalen Green is out. Day to day. Jonathan Isaac, one to two weeks. So that is not good. All right. Well, here we go. Blaster Conference Finals again. We get to play the team that beat us last year. It's, uh, it looks like Jalen Green is hurt. Day to day. Hopefully, he returns soon. Game one, we're up 1-0 despite Jalen Green being hurt. And he's back. So, maybe he played in game one. Uh, actually, I can see real quick. Box score. Yes, he did. So, that's probably a huge help. All right. Here we go. Game two. Uh, they even it up. All right. Game three. We're up two to one. Game four. They even it up. Can we go up in game five? Are we healthy right now? Let's check. And yes, we are. We're fully healthy. Game five. This is huge. Game five. We're up three to two. And we beat them six. We're in the NBA finals. Let's go. Now we get to play the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo. But his team kind of sucks around him other than Middleton and maybe Mo Bamba. Okay. That's good for us. As far as injuries, we're good. All right. Here we go. Game one. They're up one to zero. You know, Sonny Koopa would be tough to guard, but we have Jonathan Isaac who could maybe do a little bit there. Uh, we even it up. Good start. Uh, or good, good, uh, good way to you know even it up. All right, here we go. Two to one. Three to one. Yeah, let's go, baby. Let's freaking go, baby. All right, can we beat them in five to win this championship? Yes, we can. Just like that, the Houston Rockets did what we never could with James Harden. Paulo Manchero is your finals MVP, and despite the injuries, despite the struggles we had, we were able to accomplish what we wanted and win a championship. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. This was relatively a long one, but it was worth it. So, thank you guys for watching. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.